welcome you all back to Human Humane Architecture, the show uh, that looks into humility and humanity in the built environment. And this show here, um, I'm referring to another genre of the arts, which is music. And if you watch Access TV, that movie show uh, on uh, TV, I'm thinking of a sort of a journalist approach, sort of an angle to things. And I'm thinking of Dan Rather and his uh, show is the big interview. But there's actually two other shows that are refer to more because that's like Brian Johnson's, so the ex or still ACDC frontman, his show is called A Life on the Road, or Paul Schaefer, who is the uh, music opening act of uh, Letterman's uh, night shows, and his, his show is called Plus One. And I, staying in that realm, I actually have the privilege to have a Plus Two show, and if we can go to the first slide here, um, I also want to share some uh, background, how I could sort of position myself to the subject matter. This is a project we've been doing some years ago about bringing back um, uh, sort of nurturing and, and daily food supply to a, uh, to a neighborhood that has gone, um, uh, grown old and so have its inhabitants, as you can see on the, on the top left. Uh, you can also see a musician there. So this relates to one of our guests today, Richard Lowe, is a gifted musician. Uh, the project is out of uh, Prefab Concrete, which uh, reminds me of our uh, fellow guest, uh, Bonnet Kanistakon. Um, one thing at the bottom right that I wasn't able to accomplish, and I'm sad about it, that we weren't able to keep the original um, building, the original structure. And so um, this ended up being a new construction. And so um, our two gentlemen are, are able to shoot for that and able to tackle that issue. And so uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, here we are. We already know them from previous shows. To the left here is uh, Bundet and Janice. Uh, they're experts in uh, urban infill, in prefab concrete, in ecology and on the right we have Sir Richard Lowe who's an expert in music as we already said in masters planning and the two of them come up with fascinating polemic propositions as in the bottom right where they were suggesting for um, Waikiki uh, in fact a very light rail and so light that it can float so again they have been in the Moloili neighborhood where the lofts are they've been in Kaka'akao uh, rich a uh, while ago and they went to uh, Waikiki so you guys welcome back to the show and um, thank you thank you Martin and okay, I wouldn't bring up one slide that you just sent to me and you wouldn't have known you wouldn't think I would bring it up but I I like to do so so Rich this subject matter is very close to you and please tell us why and why is it what does it have to do with this image here I'd have to put on my glasses to see it. That's okay. This is to give you a hint. This is it's you okay. in the hospital where you wrote me a note. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh yeah. Thanking you, I guess, for the opportunity to appear on uh, your show and that I'd like to do it again. Yeah, it was more actually than thanking me. I think it was promising us to be back on the show recovering from the little work you had to be done and now you're up and running again and you guys were actually running together and again as you've been in Moloili before in Waikiki and in Kaka'ako where did you guys walk and run now and let's bring up the first your first slide here and tell us about that well uh, this is uh, sort of a, a, a double district uh, Makiki this is above the freeway, Malka of the freeway in both Manoa and Makiki, but not all the way back into the valleys or into the mountains behind. So we selected that area because it, it, it interested us. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we live close to that area as well. And um, during his time after hospitalization, um, he liked to walk around, and that's the area that we uh, venture out into and uh, to keep his heart rate going. Well, and in, and in fact, if you go to the next slide here, um, you tell us about the history of the place. That's, of course, important. I'll just do a quick, 
quickie on that. Uh, you can see that the, the method of transportation for people in the very old days uh, was to get up to many, many of the people, old families of, of, uh, in, in the city uh, obtained properties up in Tantalus, which is exactly behind this picture. Mm -hmm. And they would go up on uh, horse and carriages. And I, I used to work with a person who was in, within a family that did that. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the next slide and see obviously how the place, well, where the place is, uh, where it's located here on this map. Obviously we're on the island of Oahu and it's in this very sort of central part at the bottom on the South shore. But uh, let's go to the sort of aerial view here and tell us more how it's sited in its context between the Mauka and the Makai, meaning the mountains and the ocean. But you can see the the, the hills and, and their, their valleys and so forth uh, on the upper right side of the picture. And then you can look down and find it kind of in the mid, off the middle, the Hanlu Airport. And then to the right of that, between the tidal airport and Makiki and Lower Manoa, Mm -hmm. You can see Sand Island, and then below the word Makiki, you can see Ala Moana and Waikiki. Yeah, and let's go to the next slide. Um, again, this shows its sort of its vastness, as you had explained, um, and it's sort of covering two districts. It, it's touching our workplace, uh, Hood uh, Manoa as well. And uh, go to the next slide here, um, you started, this is where it gets really interesting because you started to basically sort of start to map sort of the diagram and, and look at certain aspects of the, of the community. And, you know, again, we should reiterate and say, recap, when you were out of the hospital, you weren't quite mobile as you used to be and you needed to work on that. And you discovered that actually certain things you weren't able to do because there were, there was a lack of certain things, um, that and that very personal experience got you very sort of sensitive and, and sensitized about what you guys were uh, starting to discover and and so let's go through the different sort of aspects of of elements in the community and this very first one which is very sort of fundamental for the what you're proposing right uh these are you know the dots um the pink one are the one that we went to visit and then the purple one is the other churches or temples that we haven't gone to visit. So this just to show you how many churches uh, that we have, you know, in that in our neighborhood. Uh -huh. So Richard can talk a little bit more about it, about, you know, what is so important, you know, uh, in our neighborhood. Well, the, the pink dots uh, sort of to the left of the center of the photo, photo you see right here, are we picked them because they were significant architecturally and they had a long history in the positions that they're shown there. And uh, there are a few new ones. And then uh, we, we thought it, was, it would be very interesting to explore into what the churches might do that would uh, make them a little more functional as parts of the neighborhood and vice versa. What could the neighborhood do to make the churches more more functional? And while you and were so that got us while you were walking them, you talked to the uh, the people running them, operating them, and you discovered some challenges they have these days, right? Right. Yeah. That that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of it, you know, they're not doing so well because of the um, decline of the attendance. Uh, yeah. People who like to come to church um, are in the decline. And um, a lot of people, you know, going to church now, um, we always make fun of each other that we're going to church of Alamona shopping mall. <laughs> so this is um, yeah. something that, you know, we found out that a lot of people spend their time at the shopping mall. That's, that's their church. We that's where they go buy stuff. We worship our and, um, God capitalism, so. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and let's go to the, the next slide here. 
Um, yeah. and, and talk a bit, a little bit about the sort of the sectional quality of, of placing, um, you know. Well, the, the, uh, the, the highest points uh, that are in green, those are round top and tantalus areas, which we, you saw when you saw that carriage in the woods kind of thing. And then it slopes down to uh, toward the flatlands of both Makiki and Manoa. And that's that, that low slung area. Right. That punch bowl that we see right there. No, this is the Manoa um, elevation. Um, the reason why we choose these two neighborhoods uh, is because um, we feel very urbanized. Because when you are in Manoa or in Makiki, um, where majority of people live, um, you don't see the ocean. You feel very like a part of the city. Mm -hmm. And we want to reemphasize that, you know, as the way that we can really make it more fun and memorable and, you know, um, meaningful for the people that live in this neighborhood. So yeah. that's why Richard and I start walking everywhere and mm -hmm. start to look at it, you know, not only in the urban planning side, but sectional side as yeah. well that uh, we look and at it closely. And that's like the total so. contrast or opposition to how our island is portrayed in the revamping of Hawaii 5 or Magnum PI, where it's basically all around these little blue guys there, which is oceanfront, high-rise property, all hermetic, all invasive, could be anywhere in the world, right? That's where they're shooting the scenes and that's what they're portraying is what the island is about. But we're questioning, is that actually real life, right? Or is real life more where you're talking about? Let's get the other nice uh, section up here uh, to illustrate that more. Yeah. I mean, here you see it even more, right? That's down there yeah. where we think, I mean, again, portrayed by the media where life is, but you're actually saying, and to be further discovered in the next sort of diagrams, you figured out real life might be actually up the hill more. So let's yeah. go to the next slide. And while uh, you found out that sort of churches are sort of nurturing you spiritually, they're not so much nurturing you physically with nutrition. And this is what this map about, <laughs> right? It's a, yeah, it, it, originally when I first started walking following one particular break, I, uh, <laughs> was looking for a place to stop and, and call a friend and let's say, let's let's have a beer or mm -hmm. a coffee or something. And there are very few opportunities at all. Malka of the freeway, which is the thicker line going from the upper left corner to the lower right corner, except near the university, there are, there are a yeah. number of such yeah, things. Yeah. Not in Makiki. Yeah. Well, there's one old one that's very... Yeah, yeah. By those of us who've been there. Some, we see some time. sparse dots. Let's see what else you were digging out and what there is actually. Next slide. Bike routes, right? And I'm, I feel very yeah. close to that because I'm a suicidal bicyclist on a daily basis. <laughs> so uh, I, I know how hard it is that University Avenue, our main route up to school, doesn't even have a bike lane. But you also saw some positive signs and there are diagrams at the very upper right. Talk about these. Yeah, the upper right, um, you start to see some bike lane um, go th going through the university. And in addition to that, you start to see these uh, darker blue dots that represent the Biki station. Mm -hmm. So those are the good seeds that the city planned and yeah. we love those. Yeah. You know, we wish that we could have more of those and all those green have connected to all the biggies uh, yeah. station. So and this way, the city is more walkable. And speaking uh, that's of how which, I envision it. Absolutely. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, because there's another mode of transportation that you were analyzing here. Well, the uh, bus system, which was uh, sort of invented by Mayor Fozzi as the bus, is considered one of the best bus systems in the country. And the most of the red lines you see here are for are the pathways of the city buses. And they're they're very they're reasonably thickly placed in the area we're talk areas we're talking about. So 
for example, you can get from the university over to Punchbowl mm -hmm. and other places very quickly. Yeah. And while That's it's typologically, typologically, uh, I guess, um, progressive, but architecturally speaking, uh, what could we maybe improve <laughs> and also referring to history of that mode? Any thoughts? Yeah, on that? you know, it, it yeah, you know, I, I kind of like to see it more like what Richard was showing the old history of Makiki. Mm -hmm. uh, I can start to see more like a easy breezy tram that can go up the hill. Yeah. Uh, in the old days, uh, or up in Manoa, that a lot of um, old houses are, so it would match in well with their context. Absolutely. Uh, without having to get on the aircon and uh, yeah. catch the corona disease uh, at this point. <laughs> there you go. Very timely. Thanks for reminding us. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide. You were already um, in the well, sea level rise again is. Uh, what's your your you're lucky right as far as that usually that's a problematic thing but you might benefit from that even to what degree well from a real estate point of view i think you mentioned recently that uh, people the, the sea level rise of let's say i've heard that three and a half feet is is uh, in the near future and that would inundate many of the blocks that are you know, just not the side of the beach. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but the elevation of most of Makiki, even the flat areas, is probably at least 50 feet, more or less. Yeah, yeah. And, and higher, of yeah. course. So, uh, yeah. So basically, we're going to be safe from um, the inundation and the water rises. Yeah, um, and it would that, that give us a, a flow of of increase of population because they're going to be these immigrants right migrating up the hill and and further yeah. populating the <laughs> area you're talking about and, and, and next slide is uh, you already talked about the color green and green spaces and this is really eye-opening talk about that diagram okay so the next slide is the the green space um you know, th those are the diagram that I think it's very um, important uh, to have because when you study, start uh, to think about the bus route and the, the bike route and everything. And these are the places that you can really accommodate um, all those activities that connect to each other, not only recreational, but also in the commercial side as well, that we can start to have more retail, coffee shops, and things that can connect uh, to all this green space. Um, and some are uh, belong to the schools and uh, university. Mm -hmm. So, and it really makes it so obvious how a sort of a nature deprivation syndrome we are sort of Mackay, meaning down from the big diagonal line is the our main interstate H one, and down there we're really deprived of what we consider to be paradise is green and lush, right? But it's all gray yeah, as you yeah. perfectly diagrammed and up there is actually might be more paradisal than down there so that's a potential as you exactly out, right and you know, the like next within slide. five minutes you can go hiking yeah you know, absolutely from, from your makiki and manoa so. Mm -hmm. so next one and this is again where where you collapse all the layers and this is how we you know before you start to dissect that and and look at each individual one it looks like that and obviously when put all the layers together and that's how you have to look at it after all that all these things you know have to work together and be synced and 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 finding a synergy between them which but you kind of go back to the to the initial that you put the the two things the two first things together where you said there is sort of the churches have a problem and, and, and the people in the communities have a problem finding, you know, their daily uh, nutrients, both as social interaction around, um, you know, food. And you are the, uh, our, our food Buddha. And because you've done so many, uh, you know, projects with and around food. I mean, food is the thing to get together, right? And to come together around yeah. food, Bundet. So, um, so let's yeah. go to the next slides here. Where you actually walk us through a couple of potential, uh, you know, uh, projects that that could uh, could be discovered further along the lines you're suggesting, right? 
Well, this little church is a, it's not so little actually, but it's old and it was just been repainted and re-roofed and things like that. So it's uh, prosperous enough to do those kinds of things. It has mm -hmm. a pipe organ in it. So we have a, a music program that's, that's I happen to sing with as part of the choir. And there are a lot of activities like that that, that happen in this church and 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 others as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they also have like a, a farmer's market every Thursday where we do all our grocery shopping there as well. Okay. Um, so there's a multi-layer of usage in yeah. this church. So within the sort of seven minutes left, let's sort of quickly walk through these and maybe you, you know, briefly describe. And again, they're, they're suggestive. Next slide, maybe already. So these are suggestive ones and i i referred to uh previous shows we've done the utmost scholar on hardwood who is the architect of that one is obviously our friend don hibbert up there so you can watch his show that, this that, is a very beautiful church right. obviously that that you rich pointed out you know there are there are the times when things were really done with consideration and with craft and to last so they're jewels as you, Bunnett, and I found out the hard way in our critical practices, it's hard to do that these days, right? You, you bite your yeah, teeth exactly. and your it's, tongue when you try it's to a do that. But church. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful church with a lot of grounds around it and yeah. so forth. And it's also a very stable church with the headquarters, of which, of course, is in Boston. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's yeah. it's that's a very interesting and, and building. I've been all through it with the yeah. And we not yeah. want to hide that there is a conflict of interest. We all are Dokomomo board members, so per the mission of Dokomomo, we want to keep things the way they are, not just as their substance, but also as their use. But if that is sometimes not possible, what do you do? And that's where we have to step aside, sorry, fellow board members, and come in as the <laughs> practicators who educate the young generation coming from practice and saying maybe you have to do adaptive reuse and that's what you guys are talking about to actually save the projects right yeah it could be yeah and let's move be. to the next yeah. uh case study here that you're pointing out oh this this church this is quite new actually or fairly new it's been there for maybe 10 years yeah. perhaps it was designed by spencer lineweber a former the late Spencer Langrever, former professor of architecture at UH. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a large and well-equipped church and church plant. And they have terrific attendance. So mm -hmm. that they're, they're every, every morning at 5 a.m. there's a service except on Sunday. And there are about four or five services on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. So it's, it's really thriving. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but and I mean, why go with the, the younger crowd too? That go, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But as you point out, and we got to walk through more quickly. Um, but next yeah. slide here. Um, again, you pointed out that by nature, a church is sort of a very, I mean, it's, it's a monofunctional use, but it's also sort of not very efficient and effective as 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 it's sort of. Timeshare, I mean, there's no timeshare. So timeshare is, I mean, this comes from another realm from the resort, right, in the hotel area. But don't we, why don't we apply that to these typologies and say we timeshare. So we still keep the services, but for the many hours they're empty, we we put a, we add another use, right? Yeah. For this church in particular, Martin, I'm just going to make it brief. Uh, they have a lot of good music program mm -hmm. that we attend and we found. Uh, very educational yeah. uh, for us and very impressive how they organize their music program. Okay. A lot of good concerts uh, have been performed there and we love it. Yeah, good. Yeah. And let's go to the next project here and tell us what struck you on that one. This, this is a church designed by Vladimir Asipov and it's the chapel within the Punahou School. So it's yeah. very much integrated with the school, although there they do have public events and so forth, and it's a very beautiful site, right in the pond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's very, very poetic. Yeah, very poetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And move to the next one. The Sacred Heart Church. Ah. 
this is very interesting. The Sacred Heart Church is connected to the Marinol schools, and they have schools from the very youngest to the graduating high school seniors. Mm -hmm. And to the right of that tower, uh, there's a there's a beautiful square. You talk about urban design with a, a very nice fountain in it. It's hard to see from mm -hmm. this point of view, but uh, that that it reinforces the the con concept of really trying to create beautiful spaces. Yeah, yeah. Partly outdoor. Okay. We we have so only moving two on minutes. to the next yeah, one. Yeah, move to the next one. And okay. we have only two minutes left, so I think we unfortunately have to skip over these again. These are just appetizers, food for thought, so to speak, within your realm, Bundit. But when we go yeah. to the next one, uh, this one, uh, yeah, move on to the next one. I'm sorry we have to do this, but uh, one more, please. It's okay. Please. It's okay. One more and yeah. one more. It's not only talk about, yeah. Exactly. And and so there are awesome. like some of my, go back to the previous one. Uh, and so this one here is by, by Alfred Price that Don Hibbert and, yeah. um, and um, uh, Jack Laura Gilmer McGuire. Uh, and Laura McGuire are prime scholars in. So, you know, there is some potential synergy in, in the research. And why don't we go to the very end already, because that's the one you actually choose amongst the many ones to actually tackle and address in your current studio. And talk about that for the last half minute here, please, guys. Okay. Well, the, the, on, on the, the extreme last is, is right. It's Our Redeemer, another Lutheran church on University Avenue, right across the street from the Department of Music of the University of Hawaii. And in itself, it, it's, it has very, very good musicians. And they're on the verge of exploring alternative things to do with it, including improving what the best that they have, but, but adding some other features that could be of, of interest to the university, to the neighborhood, and so forth. Yeah. And as the quotes so, on yeah, the right, so top been... right show, um, you know, there are previous investigations by John Williams, uh, by Graham Hart, by Branton. This is an Edwin Bauer building, and as you guys taught me it's one of the first and early Edwin Bauer projects so we're unfortunately out of time and but I obviously we have to bring you back to 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 continue where we have to stop now because you are working on this twice a week with the emerging generation and uh, we're looking forward to do a show about the outcomes of that so thanks for having been on this show doing the appetizer for that and then the main course all right comes next time right so um, okay. thank you all for having watched and, and thank you guys. So I'll see you next week for another episode of Unihumane Architecture back with the Soto Brown and uh, Ronald Lindgren about Harvard Square Volume 3. And until then, please stay as essentially uh, exotic, as exotically uh, essential as these two gentlemen, Rich and Bundet. Thank you very much again.